I think school is cool. We've managed to come up along from Victor Harbour and we've come to a place called Port Elliot and the bakery. Now, a big shout out to um, is it James or Jamie. Jamie. Friends of uh, Drew's daughter, Cindy. And uh, he said, if you come in this way, make sure you call into the bakery. It's opposite the hotel in Port Elliot. So, uh, thanks for your uh, recommendation. We're into it. Okay, we just left the Port Elliot Bakery and uh, the vote wasn't too bad. I would say um, probably 7 out of 10. Yep, yep. Yeah, to be fair. Um, it was a good pie though. Yeah, and it's not like we go to every pie shop around, but uh, yeah, it was good. But one of the nicest ones you've had, what, South Australia? And Borough. And Borough. Yeah, Borough was really nice. Yep. It was a good pie shop there. And it was recommended to us like this one. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, being Queenslanders and being from the Gold Coast, we do have a favourite over there too. And uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll still rate that one higher. Yes. <laughs> anyway, on to our next one. We do have some leftovers, so we've got dessert. We'll try that. They might be able to get that 10 out of 10 yet. <laughs> Just a change of plans uh, after our pie. Thought we'd come for a little bit of a walk. We come out to uh, this obelisk. It is. Um, Amazing. You know, this was back in 1852, and uh, it uh, could be seen about 19 kilometres out to sea there, apparently. And uh, if it was unsafe to come through, I guess this little patch is here or something. They put a little blue flag on it, so uh, yeah, ships used it as navigation. So this is Freeman's Knob in uh, Port Elliot, and. Uh, Staggering piece of co coastline. There's uh, yeah, some beautiful, beautiful little beaches around the place, and these obelisks. Um, this is one of uh, a few, but like those lighthouses, we'll see a few around the coast, and uh, some of them not in so uh, pristine little conditions like this. But, uh, what to call it? Port Elliot. This is our port of call for tonight. We're going to check out the local showgrounds. Extra little note, um, an interesting um, encounter happened around here, um, 1802, we know about Matthew Flinders, but uh, Captain Nicholas Baldwin, I think his name was, he was a French dude, and uh, he'd just done a bit of uh, circumnavigation, I think of Tasmania or something, and the two ships were in close proximity here, and uh, obviously the two countries were kind of like at war at the time as well, so... Uh, but that all aside, they met and uh, swapped notes on what they'd learnt on their sailing. So, uh, yeah, an interesting little spot. This time, we're going to go to the showgrounds. Good morning, and it is a beauty. We've um, moved down from our uh, Port Elliot uh, campsite last night. It was at the showgrounds, pretty awesome. Uh, 30 bucks a night, power and water, loved it. So we've tootled on down to Middleton here. Um, it's uh, nice and quiet here. Um, the train, we're gonna, oh, let, me, let me fill you in. The Cockle Express, or the Cockle Train, um, it travels from Gulwa to um, Victor Harbour, stopping at Middleton and Port Elliot. Now, um, the history between the Cockle Train was um, the Murray River, its confluence, it's, it, it ends at Gulwa, and the Murray River, being two and a half thousand kilometres long, um, carted a lot of stock, produce, items, people um, down to Gulwa. We call it that, hopefully I'm right. Um, the problem was is that the mouth for the boats and all that export stuff um, wasn't a terribly good river mouth to dock ships at so they started docking ships where we were down in Port Elliot 
The problem was is that over a period of time a lot of boats sunk because of the, uh, the hazardous nature of the, the harbour. So then they moved down to where we were at Granite Island at Victor Harbour. Thank you. Now um, they had to obviously link those places together so they put them as rail. And this is the oldest steel railway slash tramway um, in Australia, I believe, back in about 1854. And it was initially used for the transportation of all that stuff with a horse-drawn tram or cart on that rail. Um, and it wasn't until um, about 1885 that the steam train came in and made that journey a lot easier. So. The Cockle Express. Now it's called the Cockle Express too because um, apparently when people were here um, holidaying or they, they would use the Cockle Express to go up towards the Murray River at Gulwa and I think they would go along the beach side and they'd go and pick up cockles for either eat or bait, something like that. Anyway, we'll sit here and wait for the Cockle Express to arrive. Well, by my watch it says um, 10 past 10 and it's meant to be here in Middleton at uh, 14 minutes past 10. And it sounds like it's keeping good time because it's blowing the whistle a few times, so it's not far away. Express. A little disappointed, it wasn't a steam train. Oh. Uh, we'll have to find out what's going on with that one. But the old carriages were there and uh, yeah, it's a fun little journey in between, um, what was it about uh, three towns, four towns here, yeah. was it uh, Gulwa, Middleton, um, Port Elliot and Victor Harbour. Alrighty ho, well that's our next destination, Gulwa. Hopefully I sang it right. If you're eagle eye enough you'll see the Gulwa um, train station. Now yes we got it on a day when they were running a diesel they normally run a steam as well so uh, that's the train station where it come from. Now also across the road from the train station is this little park for the PS Renmark. Now it was a paddle steamer that was built in Goolawa in 1912 as a towing vessel that worked the Murray and the Darling Rivers. It was converted to a tourist boat uh, back in 1949 but believe it or not, it just finished a tour and 20 minutes later it burst into flames. Now uh, here was a uh, wooden pier and of course that caught fire. And um, if you notice over here the Oscar, it was built in um, 1908 and you can see the big pile of firewood. Well down here they also stockpiled firewood so the fire caught the firewood stocks and it took some 200 firefighters to put it out. So a uh, bit of a sad ending to the windmark, which uh, is apparently still sunk out in the water here. You can see it slightly at low tide. Um, an interesting thing too is that in 1830, uh, 1853 until uh, 1912, no less than 33 paddle steamers and 25 barges were either built or assembled here. So uh, what we've got here is obviously the end point um, of the, the Murray River. So it's traveled two and a half thousand kilometers to this point here so a very important port as I say for transporting all those goods uh, from way up top to down here and then further afield. Right, I'll have a little walk around Gula for our next port of a call. Oh, 
right just into the town of uh, Gulwa and I've stumbled across this one here. This is the uh, Australia's first public railway. Beautiful old uh, carriage, it's a reproduction of it, but uh, yeah, very nice how the people would uh, travel up and down the coast of here. So this was um, operating between 1854 I think and uh, about 1886 I think it was when uh, then they put the steam train on. So this was draw horse drawn. Right. Just before we leave the town, a little story that um, a building was purposely built way back in the uh, mid to late 1800s. It was this one here. Uh, it's too small to be a house. This was actually a morgue, I believe. Now, I'm a bit disappointed there's no signage or anything around. There was anything on wiki camps. Um, but this was built, the thing that I found quite, quite novel about it, because it was built because uh, up until it was built, the bodies of any dead people were um, put in the chiller in the hotel um, down in the cellar. And uh, people weren't happy about that, especially some people that probably drank and ate there. So, uh, yes, the morgue was built. And I suppose the morgue was pretty important around here because um, obviously with the river, if anybody sort of passed further up the river and things, they needed to sort of either get them down here to be uh, examined or Maybe they came down here for the doctors and uh, passed away and I don't know too much about it but here in Gulwa I believe you can have uh, a ghost tour and uh, this is apparently uh, one of the spots on the tour of which uh, obviously there's many, probably many spirits around. Right, we're on our way. Oh, another neat little, uh, little uh, thing over in the corner here. I think it's called the Barrel House. Pretty. Uh, interestingly designed with this big uh, arched roof. I suppose it was a, a pretty uh, modern a, a modern day architecture back then. But uh, just to the left of it, somebody's copying their design. <laughs> I, suppose, I suppose they thought, oh that looks like a cool idea. I'm going to build an arch barrel house as well. Righty, back to the van. Next port of call.